Welcome, 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 welcome to the RIP 28 Podcast. This is the RIP 28 Podcast. It's a podcast where a few friends get together and we talk about a few things. Now, some of those things you might like, some of those things you might not like, but we're going to keep on talking about them on the RIP 28 Podcast. I am your newly, newly, newly former member of Beard Game, Sly Williams. And this it's the rest of the Route 28 podcast. How you fellas doing today? <laughs> As hey, what always, up, what up? we start off with the president. What's going on there, President Tay? Hey, what's going on? <laughs> See, man, doing better. Uh, just uh, trying to make it happen. Make it happen. On the other side, we got JK. What's going on, Dr. J? Not much, man. Just enjoying the, the time, the chill time for the holidays and Everything's slowing down. You get to enjoy the people, uh, uh, your family, and all your friends. Uh, you get to see people. It's just it's really, really good time. Good time. And now right. to kick it with y'all on the podcast for one, one, uh, one episode. And we got the educators, <laughs> educator. What's going on, BZ? What it do? What it do? It's your boy BZ, the great, the educators, educator once again, aka Uncle Elroy. Here just to spread some holiday love to everybody, man. You know, glad to see you fellas, man. Hope all is well with. Not only my podcast members and friends, but everybody everywhere, man. I wish peace to everybody. I hear you. I hear you, man. Check this, man. We're on the RIP 28 podcast. It's a podcast where a few friends get together, talk about a few things, man. One thing we want to let everybody know before we get up, before we start to move around, is where you can check us out, man. We're available on all streaming sites, man. I'm talking about we're available on Anchor. We're on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, uh, Google Podcast, Spotify, uh, what else? Uh, Twitter, Instagram. Man, make sure you follow. Make sure you go. You click on the show. Make sure you like the show. Make sure you subscribe to the show. You watch it on YouTube right now. Don't waste any time. Any time right now. Go and click on the subscribe button on YouTube right now. We need to get these subscribers up. Get these numbers up. Uh, other than that, man, I'm gonna tell you the truth. If you don't click like or subscribe, that means your mama probably raised you wrong, man. That's the only reason I can think somebody wouldn't click to like or subscribe. Their mama raised them wrong, or their mama just don't even like them, to be honest with you. Mama probably don't even like you. That's the only reason you wouldn't click like or subscribe. Now, it is the we're recording this the day after Christmas. It's the day after Christmas, so it's that Christmas spirit, man. Man, what you boys man, did, did for Christmas this year, man? What, what what you do down there, JK? What was your uh, Christmas experience like? This nah, year? we uh we normally uh <clears throat> my family we get together like a week before Christmas, so uh like probably a week from week from today we uh um I got went to Columbia and uh we rotated it. You know, I got two brothers and a sister. And so we rotated each of our houses. So this year was at my uh, older brother's house. And so we kind of hung out there. You know, we got, all of us got like three kids. And so, you know, it's a lot of kids there. And so, uh, <laughs> but they really enjoy getting together. So we just, yeah, we just buy all the kids gifts and we don't buy each other mm -hmm. gifts. And so, uh, and buy our parents gifts. But, um, and so we do that. And then uh, for the Christmas, like on during Christmas, uh, I'm like, I have my in-laws come up and we, do Christmas at the house with just my kids and stuff because, you know, they get all these gifts and stuff and toys and they just want to be playing. So they don't want to be tr trying to travel anywhere. And so my in-laws will come in and then we just uh, eat together and, and exchange presents and stuff like that. So pretty relaxing. Uh, had a good time. Uh, you know, the kids had, had fun and that's, that's what it's all about. That's what it's about, man. That's what it's about, man. What about you, Beezy? What you do for Christmas, man? Man, kept it simple and traditional, man. Just made sure all the kids were happy, man. Uh, went and visited with the parents and my, my mom's sister and stuff like that, man. Just kept it simple, not too much, and made sure everybody was happy and had something to smile about. And just kept it simple, man, not too much. Just stand away from all them kids like Juwan was. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you teach the kids, so you, hey, you got the kids hey, hey, So I feel you. Stay away from kids, period. 
Got one more week to relax and enjoy. <laughs> and I plan to be kid free besides my own. Now, Chance, you had a you had a uh, a different Christmas, man. You had quarantine Christmas. What was your Christmas like? Man, you here. Yeah. Oh, there you go. I said stuck in the house, but you know, the whole family was here, so it was all good. And I see them uh, Kennedys, they like make kids. They got about what? <laughs> About what nine, ten of them all together? Uh, probably twelve. Yeah, we got like twelve. 12. Yeah, yeah. Each yeah, of us got like three. Yeah, I, so. Ain't your sister pregnant? I saw she posted something. Yeah, she got. Yeah, she got. She got another kid coming on. Uh, on There's the three for her or four. Well, uh, her husband had two, and so she got. Okay, they got two got by you. marriage, and then she got. got she, they had one together, and then she, now she got another one. Got so, you. Got you. They don't believe in pulling out in the Kennedy family tree. <laughs> Hey, we we all married, man. <laughs> hey, Jawan, hey, they, hey, they go out the window. <laughs> hey, they just they just build the more light skinned people. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, hey, that's, 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 that's childish. childish. That's childish, man. That's childish. <laughs> For real, bro. That's that's childish, man. Man, you need yeah. to grow up, dog. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We gotta we gotta grow up. Go so, oh. right. But man, I'm glad everybody had a good Christmas. Like, how about you, man? You asked everybody else, man. How about you? How was your Christmas? And man, my Christmas was pretty good, man. Um, my family abandoned me, though, man. My, um, <laughs> they, they, the whole family decided to go to DC this year. They decided to go to DC to my little sister because I got a I got a little cousin who just graduated from uh, from college in December. And she's thinking about going to Howard for grads. Well, she's she about to graduate. I think she's graduating in the spring. But um, but she's thinking about going to Howard for grad school. So they wanted to go up to D.C. and, you know, walk around Check it out. Howard campus for a little bit. So the whole family went to D.C. and uh, Camden was with his mom. So, you know, I, I kicked it, man. I, I, I spent some time with a lady friend, you know, with her and, you know, so I, just, I had a real low key Christmas, man. It wasn't a uh, traditional, wasn't a, a traditional Christmas for myself, man. But it, it's interesting, man. Juwan talked earlier about uh, tr Christmas traditions. You know uh, how they spend the week before Christmas with his family. Y'all have any different Christmas traditions? Anything that y'all do every year, man? Yeah, we are. We usually the day before, you know, Christmas Eve, we'll do the open up the stockings, pull stuff up the stockings, and uh, we'll open one gift, and then we do like a little secret Santa on the day before, before we open the rest of the gifts on Christmas. Uh, yeah, we used to go uh, bowling the day before Christmas. We'd go to the bowling alley and bowl as a family, because my dad, growing up, my dad was a huge bowler. That was his thing, man. He used to be up at Brunswick. My dad being like two leagues. He been like two leagues a, a week at Brunswick. I used to work at Brunswick. My dad got me a job yeah. at Brunswick. My dad was on that bowling too. I still got the bowling ball here in the garage. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. Man, we we don't usually do nothing much. Um, we used to do like Chan said, uh, open up gifts and on Christmas Eve and sit around and talk about when we were younger and lie and tell all them stories and and all that, but now that my son is here, man, and they whatever he say, my parents do. So that's the tradition. <laughs> yeah. Follow my side. So. Yeah, we yeah, uh, decide. Yeah, we um, <clears throat> we just in, in the day before we uh watch a movie, a Christmas movie. This year they wanted to watch Cat in the Hat, so they watched the Cat in the Hat instead of a regular Christmas movie. Um, they eat popcorn and then the wife will bake some cookies and kind of hang out and they let them stay up late and then they. Even though they still get up like super early <laughs> to open the gifts, but uh, but yeah, that's what we did. So um, uh, this year, that's what we normally do every year. Jawan, who baked them cookies for real? You or your wife? No, nah, she baked them. I, I can Don't bake lie. too, but you know, she, okay, she baked. That's all she I wanted to hear. Yeah. That you baked them too now. Yeah, she baked them. So. Okay, on a, on, a, on a different note, you know, about the Christmas, you know, the older we get, you know, the more people we lose around here. You know, so you know, Christmas ain't really the same as it used to be. Uh, like me personally, like I don't have mom, dad, no grandparents, or anything like that. So I don't get to celebrate with them. You know? But it's like I'm the, I guess I'm the, the head of the, of the chain now. That, you know, 
my kids, Thank you, y'all. Maybe, try, maybe try to start a tradition and stuff and you know, come see us and make it over. We about the house type now. Now that, now that you're in uh, Georgia, now do, do you get together with your sisters? Uh, I know you're in COVID this year. Because you yeah, were not this, this year, but, year, but yeah, last year I did. Yeah, so we were busy. But you know the best thing about that chance is having like people around you like your Rip 28 podcast folk, man. You know what I'm saying? That you you don't have to go through that, you know what I'm saying, by yourself or just your family. You know, even though we're in different cities, man, you know, we do a good job of keeping in contact with each other and staying current, pretty much current with each other and each other's lives and what's going on. So you know, we only a phone call away, brother. Oh, yeah, I know. That's what's up. Speaking of that, I, I saw uh, Tom last week. Uh, he was up here for a gymnastics competition. I didn't realize yeah. his daughter His daughter uh, is gymnastics, so he, now he's a gymnastics dad now. So yeah, uh, great, I was walking into the competition. I was like, oh, that old man right doing all the crazy. <laughs> 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 yeah, so it was cool hanging out with him, his daughter competing, my daughter competing. So I'm assuming I'll see him Uh I know we got yeah. one in Greenville. We probably I'll probably see him up in Greenville. When we Who, had won? To Who won? Who won? Who won? It's not all about winning and losing. That means nah, nah, nah. It, 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 it's not all about winning and losing. The kids lost. <laughs> nah, nah, my our gym won overall for that competition. So. <laughs> But it's not all about winning. It's all about competing and camaraderie and all that with the kids. So they having fun. It's all, it's all about winning, baby. <laughs> Just win, baby. Yeah, time came to the house for Thanksgiving. Him and his family, man. We had a good oh, they did? Cool. Yeah. <clears throat> Just win, man. That's what it's about, man. But you know what, man? Talking about Christmas traditions and stuff like that, man. Something that I always, we well, we always try to do is Kwanzaa, man. You know, we start off, we always start off the first couple of days with Kwanzaa lighting the candles and stuff like that. But then, we, you know, we just kind of, we kind of fall off. We ain't never finished it all the way with, with Kwanzaa, man. I guess if, for those of you who don't know, man, we'll put it straight off of Wikipedia. Kwanzaa is an annual celebration of African-American culture that is held from December 26th to January 1st, culminating in the communal feast called the Karamu usually held on the sixth day. It was created by Mulana Cardina based on African harvest festival traditions from various parts of Africa, including West and Southeast Africa. Kwanzaa was first celebrated in 1966. So yeah, man, you know, I, I know I don't know too much, but I'm you know I'm looking at it right here on um uh, on on um uh, on Wikipedia. Media, but I know you light the candles each, you light the candles out for each day and you got some, the seven, uh, seven principles of Kwanzaa. And I'm going to say the American name because I can't pronounce the African name. It's Umoja, which is unity, Kualijiga, I don't know, self-determination, Ujima, collective work and responsibility, Ujima, <laughs> Cooperative economics, Nia, purpose, Karumba, creativity, Imani, faith. And I know you're supposed to, you know, we sit down and talk to each other about what all that stuff means, you know, talk to your family about it. And the funny thing is, we try every year. We try. But, yeah, yeah. So who started that? Like your parents started it? Y'all trying to do Kwanzaa? Or this is something you try and do? Or? Well, not, you know, funny thing is, man, my church actually started it started oh okay i had a, a pastor and this was like in you know the early 90s or whatever he brought that idea and um because i never forget because the 26 was like um that well i guess kind of like now kind of like now it was christmas was on a saturday and then the day after christmas was on a sunday so it was perfect to say the first day of Kwanzaa, you know, we were in church, so he talked about it. You know, the, the old saint said he was devil worshiping for a second. So, you know, you so know. is there any fasting involved in Kwanzaa? Because I know a lot of churches do fasting, like, at the beginning of the year. Well, that's right? the beginning of the year. A lot of churches do that, do that Daniel fast at the beginning yeah. of the year. But, uh, but no, nah, it's not that I know of. There's no fast. Okay. Because it, it ends on the, set, on, the, on the last day. You're supposed to have a feast. 
you know, where everybody get together, you have a community feast. Um, no, Sly, Sly ain't been doing no fast. Yeah. <laughs> now, I ain't gonna lie now. I do, um, I do the Daniel fast. I do the Daniel fast at the beginning of the year, every year. Now, you're supposed to go 30 days, but I don't, I don't never go 30 days. So for the people who don't know what a Daniel fast is, like, can you explain to them what a Daniel fast is? Oh, the Daniel fast, man, it was like something in the Bible where Daniel was uh, looking for favor for God or trying to pray for God to come up with something for him. And so what he did, he ate nothing but natural stuff. I'm talking about no processed grains, no meats, nothing that was processed, just strictly raw food. You're supposed to eat, you know, raw food, fruits, nuts. No berries. You can't eat bread. You ain't supposed to eat bread because bread is processed. And uh, and drink nothing but water. Now, now me, I kind of, you know, hybrid a little bit. I I would, be, <laughs> I would cook. I would cook my vegetables and stuff like that. I do, I wouldn't just eat them raw. But uh, but some people do it. Some people just eat straight raw stuff. I'm now, about to say, I, don't, I don't know if they was processed food back then. Well, no, well, well, what, what would be considered rice is processed food. Uh, bread is processed food. You see what I'm saying? Because it, Yeah, pro processed meaning that you, unprocessed meaning that you just, you pick it from the tree or you get it mm -hmm. and, and you don't do anything to it. You just eat it. Yeah, it's straight out the ground. It's straight off the tree. <laughs> you just watch it and eat it. And that's what he did for 30 days now. The, the longest I ever did it, I did it for like, uh, I did it for 20 days. And and I'm not going to lie to you, man. You can feel in the beginning, you kind of get like mild headaches and stuff like that because you, you purify your body from all of that, uh, you know, you know, all the processed food, you know, all that processed food, you kind of get mild headaches. But you feel at the end, man, you know, you feel, you feel good. You know what I'm saying? You, you feel like you got more energy your, your body feels a little bit better but but it's hard though i ain't gonna lie it's it's it's, it's a hard thing to do think mm -hmm. about this like you did it without playing the sport i remember when hakeem elijah Wan was playing in the nba he used to have to fast and he couldn't even drink water on the sideline yeah yeah with ramadan you know a lot of yeah, the, the muslim know. guys they do ramadan and for them, they can't eat anything from sun up to sun down. Yep. Yeah. I think Kyrie, Kyrie does that. Irving. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's tough, man. I mean, I I I I know it helps the body, boy, but I know it's gotta be hard, even though you don't go through the whole process. I know that's because it's abnormal for you. You look, know what look, I mean? He got so much stored. Energy. <laughs> like he, he, he'll be all right. Yeah, he'll he, he, he be all right. He, he ain't going to hurt Sly. But, yeah, it still got to be tough to even old Sly, though, Juwan. I mean, <laughs> y'all ever fast? Any of y'all ever fast? Yeah, I do it. I, I, I do I it tried. occasionally. I tried, but I ain't going to sit up here and say I did it. I'll just say I gave an effort. No, nah, it's, it's good for you. It allows your body to, to rest and actually clean itself out. Right, because now your body's not working to to process food. So that's the you know, a lot of residents believe in fasting. It's just that uh I guess modern day America, Americans don't really regularly implement fasting into their regular lifestyle. So <clears throat> but it is good for you. You know, it is crazy, man. Um to to see how you would do it now. Cause I know J Jawan put me on to something, you know, Juwan, you probably explain it better than me, but it's called intermediate fasting. <laughs> Even Jack the word though. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, yeah, I don't know what it's called, but intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting? Okay. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, when and he had me, I didn't I didn't eat. I didn't start eating from eleven. I would start eating at eleven AM and I couldn't eat anything after seven PM. And you know, I, I think I lost a little bit, but I had gave up carbs too. Yeah, and so I, I lost a little bit of weight, but but, it, it, yeah, it's, but it's, it's hard at the beginning, right? And as you keep doing it, mm -hmm. your body adjusts and your, your body adapts to whatever you're doing. And so the more you do it, like, like we might think that Ramadan is hard for them, but they've been doing it for so long, probably the first couple of times they did it, but now they condition their mind and their body to be able to, to do it. And so it's, it's probably not as hard for them uh, going forward, um, but 
but yeah, just doing that from the get go, yeah, it could be very challenging if you never did it before. I just think about him as playing and in, and in, in playing the sport, man. The the energy. I mean, like you say, I guess once you've done it and you kind of get used to it, you kind of adjust to it. But man, I'm just thinking, man, I know how hard it is playing on a full stomach and eating what you want. So. Yeah, but you're just like like I was telling you to try and work out before you actually eat, and that's kind of the same deal. And originally, it's hard to do, but the more you do it, the more your body gets adjusted. Saying, "Hey, I don't actually need carbs or anything. I got all the stored energy, and not yeah. taps into the stored energy. It's learning how to tap back into that stored energy." So, uh, but yeah, playing at the NBA level, and uh, you said don't they don't drink water. No, that, that's that's that, that, that's a different level of, of fast. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah only, I, you could, I think you with could, Ramadan, you just you're not supposed to have anything from sun up to sundown. Yeah, you're that's really what I'm saying. Really. I don't think it was nothing. He couldn't have anything, man. And that's why I said it was so tough, man. Like, geez, because I, I had some a lot. coworkers. I had some coworkers who who were Muslim, and they're from you know they were from some parts of Africa or whatever. And and um, this was early on. This was early on in my career, and, and I know, you know, when this was when I was an installer, I was an installer, you know, at uh, Time Warner Cable back in Columbia, and it was like they couldn't have no water, no nothing to drink during the day. You know, Columbia during the fucking summer. It's hot, hot. yeah, you know, humid. It nothing, <laughs> you know? So it, so it was like he would tell me. You know, before sunrise, he would go up and drink like a gallon of water or whatever. You know, like, you got you kid me. I, I don't know how, how they did it, but he did it. He did it every, um, because I think the calendar rotates with that, with, with, with Ramadan. I'm not, I'm not sure. You probably have to have a Muslim man who can tell you more than me, but I don't think it's like every July, every June. I think, I think it rotates, you know, so. So I don't know how that works, but he better than me. <laughs> he better than me. That's what you call sacrifice, boy, and dedication. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't, you don't just do that. You don't just do that to play with it. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Check this, man. We're running close to a break, man. We need to go ahead and break for a second, man. This is the Rip Twenty Eight Podcast. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll see you back in a second on the Rip 28 Podcast. Hey, I'm Jay Little, the owner of Ford Counseling and Consulting. We're a consulting and coaching firm who believes in the TLC method, truth, love, and community. Whether coaching corporate clients, individual clients, or engaging in individual counseling and group counseling, we believe that you can be more than what you are today by finding your truth, love, and community. You can reach us at www.4cc.net or give us a call at 803-457-5413. I'm just- Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. This is the RIP 28 Podcast. It's a podcast where a few friends get together and we talk about a few things. Now, some of those things you might like, some of those things you might not like, but we're going to keep on talking about it on the RIP 28 Podcast, man. Check this out on the RIP 28 Podcast. We like to do some listener letters, man. We like to do some listener letters. Listen, I got to type that in, listener letters. And the thing is, man, we want to uh, help help somebody out, man. Give some advice. Give some advice to the people out there, man. We And another way you can reach us, for those who don't know, man, you can hit us in our DM. Uh, you can hit us in uh, – what's, what's our email address, Chan? What's the email, Chan? Uh, RIP28podcast at gmail.com. All right, where else can they hit us? They can hit us at our Twitter. They can hit us on Instagram. We got a uh, – Facebook is uh what rip two eight. Yep, rip two eight spelled out. Uh-huh. Spelled yeah, yeah, out. Yeah. Spelled out. So man, you can hit us up, man, and you can um we'll actually answer your questions, man. We're gonna pull this thing up, man. Let me go. 
Got to fig find it all there. Boom. Let's see this one. Uh, let's go to share screen. Right here. Once again, we got a letter and I had to copy and paste. I copy and paste the letter. So to take out the person's info from their, um, from their page. It says, what up, guys? I had a serious problem. I have a friend who is in a terrible relationship. The guy she is with is unemployed, uneducated, and doesn't treat her like the queen she is. But she refuses to leave him. She is a wonderful woman and a wonderful mother. She does a great job of raising her four kids without him. He is the father to one of him, one of them, but the other two kids' fathers are non-existent. I just pay, I guess that should be one, just pays child support and neither makes any contact with the kids. Even though he is in her house, he doesn't contribute financially. He sits around the house all day and plays video games. He does cook and clean, but that is it. He doesn't take my friend out on dates. He never compliments her. He just exists. She needs to leave him. I have kept my mouth shut so far, but I feel that I need to tell her something. Should I tell her to leave him? A helpful friend. <laughs> Fellas, is she a helpful friend, man? What, what, what's going on with her, man? What, what, what's your advice? Should she tell her uh, to leave? The I, I don't think she has a place in telling her friend anything unless her friend was confiding in her that she was displeased with the guy, right? So it, it sounds to me like she's looking at all this stuff that the guy's not doing, right? And she, this stuff is important to her to be done, you know, but to her friend, it doesn't sound like her friend really voiced that stuff to her. It's more or less that she, you know, that's my close friend and it just burns me up the way the dude is treating my friend. Um, so I don't know whether it's her place to even say anything but you know, her 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 friend could have voiced some of this her opinions to to her about her her dude. But yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that don't seem like none of her business to me. Uh, I mean, he played, so he sit at the house, play video games, and he he does do stuff around the house. But I mean, that might be the agreement that they have. I mean, we don't know. I mean, to each his own. My my what thing I is, man. <laughs> My thing is, you know what the dude sound like, man. You break down the letter, you break down the letter, man. The dude sound like a housewife. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? She, she's sitting up here saying he don't do anything, but if the dude, the dude cooking and cleaning, the dude cooking and cleaning, you know, you don't have no job. You don't have no job. Ain't that's what most housewives do? <laughs> Ain't that more housewives do? Sit around the house, cook and clean, keep that. Keep the house in check. Hey, and but that's, yeah. that stuff is important. Hey, I got, <laughs> it's I, I, yeah. hey, Somebody got to do it, right? Hey, I got two quick points. Uh, the first one is, if, if she's a friend, what are friends for? Uh, don't friends are supposed to give you some kind of advice? And my second point is, that's his contribution to the house. Everybody can't make the same contribution. It's just as important. House, yeah, the house got to be clean. The food gotta be gotta be uh made. So he making a contribution, just not in a way that I guess traditionally men had. Have. I mean you yeah. take man, you go and break break down the letter, man. Break down the letter for somebody. All right, so I'm looking at this now. She say unemployed, uneducated, and then treat her like the queen she is. So what does that really mean though? Because I mean he don't have a job, of course he ain't taking out on the date. I mean, I guess, I guess that's her going out on a date with him type thing, you know, <laughs> taking him on a date. But um, I don't know what you mean by uneducated. Does that mean he didn't graduate high school or he just ain't go to college or what? And, and it looked like she got four kids and he is only one of the daddies, but he's there with the rest of the kids too, taking care of them, cooking and cleaning the house. So, I mean, he don't seem that bad. I mean, of course, as a, as, as a man, uh, most of us, you know, we, we say we got to work and all that good stuff. But like I said, that may be the, that may be the relationship they have, the uh, contract that they put together, you know. And see, this is the thing, man. For me, you can't go in somebody else's house and 
and dictate somebody's house and figure out what works in somebody else's house. If that girlfriend, if her girlfriend ain't coming to her saying, yo, this, I need to get out of this house. I'm having a problem, I'm having a problem. Well, you need to shut up. Because apparently her girlfriend liked the way it's going. But here, here go the thing. Here go the thing. And a lot of people ain't going to like this when I say it. But, you know, I say some things people don't like. This chick got four kids and three baby daddies. What other dude going to come in and jump in on this? You know what I'm saying? What other dude going to come in and say, let me let me pick up this problem? So you better stick with the you better stick with the devil you got. You know what I'm saying? Say, love, love the one you're with. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, right. you going to tell her to go and drop this dude. And what else out there for? Hey, one thing that wasn't stated in that letter, too, like the person who wrote the letter, we don't know if they're in a relationship or not. Oh, true, true. They may be, they may be one of the little bitter people, you know, hating on everybody else's relationship. You know, that, that happens quite often these days. You better believe it. That's a good point, Chance. You know something else that wasn't stated in this letter, too, now that I think about it? It wasn't stated if this was a man or a woman writing the letter. Who is the friend? Who is the friend? Could be. Could be a jealous, you know, dude who say, yeah, we friends. But you know what I'm saying? He ain't, he ain't that, that, that type of friend who tried to get in there. Mm -hmm. One of those type he, of friends. He might want that free ride. <laughs> he uh -huh. might to, hey, man, he ain't doing nothing. At least I can bring a couple of dollars to the table. Hey, like this, I, work at, I work at the 7-Eleven. I bring a yeah. up. I pay I this a light bill. Yeah, See, so that's a good point. My thing is, man, if you are a friend, and when it comes to friends and relationships and stuff like that, man, all you guys, y'all, you know, marriages or whatever, man, y'all come and say, man, hey, this is going on in my world. This is going on. I will never say, yo, bro, man, fuck that bitch. I'll never say no shit like that. And the reason for it is because if I say that, if I say, man, fuck that bitch, you going to tell, y'all might get back together. And if y'all get back together, you know, pillow talk, you're going to come out and say, man, Sly had told me to say fuck you. And now, <laughs> and now, and now it's going to be like, every time she see me, it's going to be like, yeah, that's the nigga who told, told you to leave me. You know? Cool. So my thing is, man, if you ask me for advice, I'm going to tell you what I would do in the situation. But if you don't ask me for advice, I ain't gonna tell you. I ain't gonna tell you what you need to do, man. Yeah. Hey, that's funny that you bring that up because I see this on like Facebook almost daily, man. Like somebody, oh, I can't stand so and so. We broke up, single life, blah blah blah. And then yeah. the next week they take they taking pictures together. You know, me and my boo, me and Bay doing this. I'm like, man, keep y'all business out the out the internet, man, because. We know you going back, even though y'all break up every other week. Mm -hmm. you, you, you getting back with them, so that that just be tripping me out. Hey, and then they get mad when you comment on it and say something. Uh, well, you put it out there for everybody to see. Ain't like I went in your inbox and said it. You put it out on you put it out on the internet. It's on you. you yeah, that's know. on you, Claire. You don't know how many accounts I done been blocked from <laughs> for saying for saying the obvious, man. And, and, and he go he go the crazy thing is, man. Like, I can so, just imagine, Sly. I we already we are, we already know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I ain't gonna hold my tongue, bro. I'm gonna say, if you put if you put it out there for the world to see, you know, what I'm saying I'm gonna give you the attention you wanted. You wanted some attention. I'm gonna give you the attention you wanted, man. And then. <laughs> You got you got one, you got well not one, it's a couple of chicks, man, who, who sit up there and they constantly post, this is my new boo. I'm in love with Bay, I'm in love with Bay and Bay forever. Then six months later, this is another dude. This is my bae. This is Bay. I'm like, bitch, what happened to the old bae? <laughs> Not the old bay. Oh, that old bay season. Yeah, that, that old bay got stale. That old bay, old got stale, man. He won't that no more. Uh, she, she just, she just, she's just living life, slide with bay. Why she can't be with bay? Hey, bay, bay, hey, bay, bay. <laughs> she say how many old bays or bays she got? She just say this the new. 
She ain't say yeah. what she did with the old one. And it's funny, you know, like, Sly probably lived the same life, but he just don't put it out there on, on Facebook like that. So we all know. <laughs> <laughs> My Facebook page be full of memes and funny videos. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that's the thing that a lot of people about, they get caught up on social media. They like, they let social media run their life. And I tell people, social media ain't real. It ain't real. Yeah, I, would yeah. go, I would go down social media, go down Instagram, and I just cl click like. I click like. Anybody put a picture up, I click like. They put a picture of their kid up, I click. I just like. I just like. I just like. You know, just because I click like on your picture, I don't think you're pretty. Y'all got some regular ass kids, but I still click like on them. Just, you know what I'm saying? Just, just to like, man. I done seen pictures of motherfuckers who look terrible. And then somebody who's looking good, girl, looking good. But you know, hey, man, I just click like. Hey, hey, especially some of them plates some people be putting out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be you like, know, ooh, that food looks so nasty. <laughs> You know, man, it, it, it ain't real. If, if you need your validation, off of a Facebook post, you know, something wrong. Now, I can't tell you a lot. I can't tell you a lot. Now, I have posted some things or made comments or something, and, and it made me feel good that somebody liked it or somebody retweeted. I can't, I can't even lie. It, it has this thing. Like, it was, um, you know, we were talking about five heartbeats last week. I had posted something um, on Twitter. I was watching the five heartbeats. And when they were singing the song, when Duck was singing the song, he was cleaning, his little sister was trying to clean up and she helped write it, write the song. Well, I had went and tweeted, I said, I went and tweeted, I, I said, uh, at Robert Town said, did Duck ever pay his sister writer's credits for them songs? And then he he wrote back, he liked it, and he wrote back and said, nah, he ain't never given nothing. The industry was different back then. <laughs> uh, that shit made me feel good. Yo, this nigga, I was on a high for a couple of days. You know what I'm saying? But if, if he would have wrote back and said, you dumb fuck, why would you ask that or something like that? I would have moved on. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I don't know if... Uh, uh, maybe I'm speaking out of context because I don't be on social media like that, but our generation doesn't really fall into that. I think generations behind us more so, probably. I, I, Brian looking at me like, uh, <laughs> I'm wrong. <laughs> well, I would hope that our generation would kind of fall into that that, that uh, trap of, uh, um, but yeah, but yeah, I definitely agree with what you're saying. It's like yeah, you'd be surprised. It's people, it's people our age and older for all up in oh, the That's the thing that yeah. get me. Why, like Sly said, what does social media do for my life? Like, I mean, whether you like the picture or not, I'm still going to have to go to work, still going to have to live life. I ain't going to base my life around social media likes and comments and views. I promise you that. Yeah, but everybody, don't, don't, but but everybody the only way don't that, live like that. Yeah, and the only way that matters if you get paid off it, right? Now, if you get paid off it, it should yeah. matter. But if you're not no, getting paid off it, it, it don't matter, right? <laughs> I don't yeah. care how many people I, view it. I don't care how many people like, like it. Uh, so. I, feel I, like I, I agree I, with you. I feel like when I post something, I'm doing y'all a favor. <laughs> Keeping you away from some of that stupidity. I'm posting something positive. But if you don't like it, you don't like it. But, you know, you don't have people like that, man. People get offended and, and tell you because you celebrating a fifth place trophy. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff like that, man, that we just don't need. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, I, I agree with what uh, Juan, though. You know, unless you got like a million followers that you know that so, like YouTube or Facebook starting to pay you for that. I mean, who cares, man? Ooh, man, for real. Man, I, but I you, tell you, man, but I dang, bro. <laughs> social media uh -huh. helps me sometimes with some of these some of these really sensitive friends, man. I, I had a childhood friend, man. Somebody known my whole life, but she used to, I don't know what she do now because I'm blocked. I'm partially blocked <laughs> from the account. So I don't know what she do now, but she would post a picture every day, get in the bathroom and post a bunch of pictures every day of herself. You know, good little girl, but she posts some pictures. And I, I, I went one day, I was like, do you really need somebody to like you that much where you gotta post every day? Uh... 
No. Hold on, who, who are you talking about? No, 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 no. Oh, 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 wait a minute. Okay, I think I know. I think I know. I, I, I think I know who you're talking. You know about. who I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, I know too. But I'm like, you really need somebody like you that much? And um, I got a, I got a text message. I got a text message. Fuck you, Sly. <laughs> and then I clicked on the page, and all I can see is just the page. I could, I don't never see any, see any new new uh, posts. And, and, you know, it's funny with people when it comes to blocking me because you know I got a business page and my personal page, but they'll block me on my personal page but my business page. I'm still friends on my business page, so that point I'd never figured out. But okay. now you gave the secret away. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'll be honest, I don't care, man. If, if you block me, you block me, man. My life's still going to go on. My, my life's still, life still going to go on. So, so it, it, it is what it is, man. But, uh, but it's just, I don't know, man. If people, people put too much. People put too much into... Um, people put too much into this social media, man. They put too much into social media, so... Gotta let that shit ride, man. Let it, let it ride, let it ride, man. So, yeah, oh, man, let's let's get back, get back to the question, man. Get back to old girl. Get get back to old girl, man. Um, jumping in her friend business. Um, I think my vote is shut the fuck up. It ain't none of your business. It, it ain't none of your business. Stay out of stay out of grown folk business. If your friend is happy, if your friend hadn't came to you and said, I have a problem with this, you shouldn't have a problem with it. That's how yeah. I Yeah, I agree. I say, I say leave him alone. And then how much time does he spend around these folks that saying that he don't never compliment her, never say nothing good to her and stuff like this? I'm like, you need to go find you something to do yourself instead of being all up in that stuff. But can't tell everybody the right thing. Well, I'm a vote that you should mind your business too, man. I'm a firm believer in minding your business, dog. I'm just a firm believer in it. If it ain't, if it ain't, if they don't bring it directly to you, or don't ask your opinion, they must like what's going on, or they got the situation under control. So, I mind my business, dog. I'm a firm believer in minding your business. Like she said, uh, basically, whoever said was that the dude was whooping up on her and nothing like that, right? Yeah, see, it's a difference now. If you come out and you read the letter, you know, you see, you see your friend walking around with black eyes and she's being beat on. That's a whole different subject now. Then, then you say something, then you do something. Yeah. You, you know, but but he go now he goes something crazy about um, abuse and all that type of stuff like this now, because now we like we all come from a, a, a family of strong men and and you know, but. I don't know about y'all, but I ain't never seen my daddy raise my hand to my mama. You know what I'm saying? I, that ain't that ain't nothing we ever seen. And I know I, I wouldn't tolerate it off of none of y'all. You know what I'm saying? If, mm-hmm. I, if I seen y'all do something like that, man, you know, I would I would step to and say something. You know, that ain't how it go. But yeah. you, you see, you see a lot of women, man, who go through spousal abuse and stuff like that. And the thing that I can never understand because I ain't never been in that situation is how do you stay? You know, why do you why do you, why don't you get the fuck home? Yeah. I don't be scared, man. Yeah, yeah, I guess. But I, I tell I tell my little sister, you know, she's she's not dating anybody and she's never been through anything like this. But I tell her, I say, if a man put his hands on you, he put his hands on you, I say, do what it takes to quietly and silently get up out the house. Don't try to hit them back. Don't try to fight them back. You know, do what it takes to get up out the house. And once you're out the house, give me a call. And then big brother, go ahead. I'm a, you don't have to call the police. <laughs> you just call me. You, you call me and I'm going to handle it. I'm going to handle it. I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to take care of it to a point where he ain't going to put his hand on no more women. You know, but the thing is, if if I take care of it and you go, go, back. go, and back. You go back to him, to me, that means you want to go back to him. That don't, I, I'm not going to go and beat another dude up every every other fucking month. 
because you keep going back to him and he keep beating your ass. No, no, no that ain't that ain't gonna happen, man. But but I, I I let my sister know. I say if a dude put his hands on you, do whatever it takes for you to silently and quietly get up out the house. And once you up out the house, let me know. And big brother, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We <laughs> we got things to handle situations like this. <laughs> big brother. Yeah. Handle so. yeah, I can't I can't stand that sly. No, no man beater. I'm um I'm 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 with you on that, man. I that ain't that ain't what's happening. So if I saw y'all doing that, I would definitely step to you and tell you, nah, because you ain't you ain't never seen it in your household. Why why are we bringing it and acting like that? Mm -hmm. and, and it's one of them things, it's like a generational thing. You know, they talk about generational curses and stuff like that, man. You know, because if you, you know, if you beat, if you beating on your old lady and you got kids, and if you got a boy, a boy going to think it's okay to beat on his old lady. And if you got girls, the girls going to think it's okay to get, get, get beat on. And then, and then the crazy crazy part, part to me is, though, like, if you feel like you got to fight somebody, why are you with them? <laughs> like a relationship ain't uh you know sparring match, boxing match, uh a wrestling match. Like we ain't we ain't come here to be together to fight each other. I mean, come on now. That's crazy. But you gotta know you don't know what they grew up seeing. You know what I mean? They may have grew up grew up seeing their mom and dad or mom and boyfriend or dad and girlfriend go through that. You just never know, man. You can never say what somebody went through. Yeah, and I agree with Braun. Sometimes that's if they grew up seeing it, that's their normal, right? And so yep. that's what they're used to. And if you're not, if I'm in a relationship and it's not happening, I think you don't probably don't love me because that's what I used to seeing. That's how I, you know, picture Identify that you love. care. Yeah. So hey man, I'm sorry, <laughs> so, sorry, Juwan. You know, <laughs> Juwan, Juwan me get beat. I don't know, tell nobody. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, hey man, that's just what I used to, man. <laughs> I just deal with there, it. Man. There I you go again. <laughs> I can't, you know, I can't. <laughs> but hey, but you'll be surprised that man, working with kids, you'll be surprised that some of the stories that you hear from kids about some of the things they see here and experience at home, man. You'll be like, man, you lying. But then when you see that that D, that DSS custody uh employee come up you like man they ain't lying yeah, man. so it, it's it's crazy man you you'll be surprised man working with kids man i've learned a lot yeah my, my wife used to work at like this uh boarding school kind of thing but like it was like a i guess a group home where they stayed mm -hmm. on the campus or whatever and like yeah man you hear some stories boy i'm telling you like you like man how these these kids is gonna be messed up but you For know they, they, they try their best you know to you know, to help them and have them live a normal life, go to school and all that stuff. But they still have some issues. But, I mean, I mean, you know, if you can get one or two out of the ten that's there, you know, to come out on top, you know, I mean, you did something, you know. Man, you, it's, it's, it's funny you say that. I, um, and through college, that's how a lot of my teammates did. We would uh, leave practice and go work at a uh, what they call a residential treatment facility. Where the kids stayed there, we got kids from DJJ, emergency custody, stuff like that. And man, they come in, dog, and you see some of these kids, man. And it's like, man, how do you expect for this kid to really make it? And look what, look what they just, you know, what I'm saying, just got pulled from. Like they come in, black eyes, swelling, hadn't eaten. I mean, hair like matted to. The, and man, I could go on and on, man. But anyway. We see some crazy stories in those situations, man. Yeah, man. It's amazing. You know, sometimes you gotta you gotta pray for the youth, man. You gotta pray for the kids out there. Cause it's it's a lot of shit that these, these youngsters go through that, that we won't never see or we don't know about, man. And yes, sir. It's, it's a lot, man. It, it is a lot. Check this out, man. We're running up to it. We're running up to it, man. We're gonna take a quick commercial break. We're gonna take a quick commercial break. And then when we get back, man, we're going to take a walk down the 90s block. We're going to take a walk down the 90s block when we get back. So we'll see you back in a second here on the RIP 28 podcast.
Welcome back, welcome back to the RIP 28 Podcast. The RIP 28 Podcast. This is a podcast where people are together. And we talk about a few things, man. Some of those things you might like. Some of those things you might not like. But we're going to keep on talking about it on the RIP 28 Podcast, man. We're going to take a, a trip down this 90s block, man. And, and uh, in honor of our man, Dre, Dre, Dre taking a little vacation, man. He's enjoying his vacation. But we're going to keep the... Uh, tradition going with the 90s block, man. So we'll start off with the 90s block. The 90s block, you got to choose. Last week, we talked about singing groups. We're going to say Boys to Men or Jodeci. Start off with you, President. Man, I, I got to go with Boys to Men. Um, I like Jodeci. I like them a lot, but... Uh, Boys and Men was just, you know, they had some of the more iconic songs, I guess, that go down in history. Now, now, Jodeci, if you're talking about getting freaky now, Jodeci is on that. All right. What about you, J.K.? Yeah, I'm, uh, I would say Boys and Men also. Um, yeah, that, it, it just comes in our time age, time frame. It's just one of those uh, iconic, iconic groups. Okay, okay. What about you, Brittany? Well, I'm, I'm going with Jodeci, man. They had a whole trend. They had the Jodeci boots. Everybody walking around singing Casey. And, ooh, ooh, yeah. All that. I'm going Jodeci, man. You still see cats with the Jodeci boots, man. Ain't nobody still <laughs> living like no damn uh, uh, boy. Well, I, mean, I, I will say this, though. I used to hate on uh, Jodeci, though. I used to be like, these little ugly dudes, man. All these, all these girls love these dudes. <laughs> Just connect and sign. No, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you what it comes down to, man. It comes down to what, what you're trying to accomplish and who you're trying to accomplish it with. <laughs> if you in love, you got you got your girl in love with you. You know what I'm saying? You might want to play that boys the men. But if you got that thing you just trying to knock down. <laughs> That Jodeci, that, that way Jodeci covered the picture. You got that thing you try to knock down and leave. That way Jodeci, man. But you know something else, something funny, though, about um, Boys and Men, the dude, uh, Wanye, he has, like, uh, four sons and I think two daughters or something. Yeah, man. I seen them sing. Them boys sing, man. Yeah. They sound, and, and then he got, he got a daughter, too, and she sang, too, man. Man, I'm like, damn, them kid talented, man. Yeah, I seen that. I seen that. Happy dog on. Now check this out. Check this out. What was more iconic? The the Bulls in the 90s or the Dallas Cowboys in the 90s? What was more iconic? I gotta say Bulls, because it's fuck everybody cowboys forever. So it's Bulls for me, man. What about you? Now I'm gonna go Bulls. Go Bulls. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I go Bulls. I, I, I was, I, I admit, I was an MJ hater, but I respected MJ. MJ, he did the doggone thing, and it's you know, you know, I wanted the Pacers to beat him, I wanted my Lakers to beat him. You know, nobody just couldn't beat him when he was at, he at the top. He was at the top, and so uh, I didn't know you was a Laker fan. I, I'm a Laker fan, man. You, yeah. I, you know, I was a Kobe fan. You know that. Yeah, come on now, you know that. Now, Lakers, Lakers struggling. My, I'm a bastard to even be a Lakers fan. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they having a hard time. <laughs> hey, Jawan, we gotta let that hurt go, man. We, we, I mean, they came and got some guys like me, you, Chance, and Slack, <laughs> trying to compete against Golden State. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> man, we, do, we, we, I mean, uh, we were playing in the the, the thirty seven over league. We champions, but man, we playing against them young cats, man. We can't keep up, bro. That team, that team is gonna be so trash once LeBron gone. <clears throat> Think yeah, about yeah. it. You're yeah, gonna have AD. AD, AD, and you still. I guess you got Russ for this year, and next year. They don't, street have, clothes. they don't have AD. They, that man, street clothes. That's they what yeah, they got Mr. Glass. Yeah, AD, <laughs> AD, ain't what I thought he was. Anthony uh, Street, he got he, he helped, man. When he's healthy, he's good, man. But we just talking about the 90s block, man. We all the way in 2021. But, but yeah, yeah, no, so, I, I just so. watched that game yesterday. It's, it's, just, it's just depressing. But, oh, yeah, so. <laughs> all right. yeah, I, I ain't never been no Cowboys fan, so, yeah. It's the Bulls with me, too. All right, the last one in the 90s block. The last one in the 90s, 90s block. What was more iconic? 
Call Kana or Fubu. Call Kana or Fubu. Ooh. I'm gonna go call Kana. Call Kana. Yeah, I'm gonna go call Kana, man. I like that. I like that for us bias. Yeah, Juwan used to be rich, so he had all that kind of clothes. I only got a couple food blue shirts or something. <laughs> I didn't know being rich. Hey, 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 you, did, <laughs> and you just got them, champ. I, 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 I still work. I still rock it out. Y'all, y'all seen that uh, movie? Ha ha! When he's like, uh, "What's that?" He's like, "Boo food." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had to wait. I had to wait for Fubu to get to uh, TJ Maxx, Marshalls. Yeah. <laughs> Once they made it right, yeah. Ross, you can get it out of Ross too, Slaw. Yeah. Oh, no, I was yeah. back in the day, back then we would. Oh, like, okay. Yeah, yeah. Fubu. Who, who, made, who made Fubu? That was a uh, uh, Dame, right? Uh, no, 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 no. no. Rockaway. Fubu, Rock. Fubu was just the, the four brothers from Harlem. I don't know their names. But okay. I think Dame, I know one of one of the dudes on Shark Tank now. That's what I'm talking about. That's it. His name Damian John. Yeah, Dame, Dame John. Well, I didn't know his name, but Dame something. Yeah, yeah. yeah he. I think we was talk, thought you was talking about Dame Dad. Yeah, I thought. Oh, uh, uh, no, no, no. That's what I was talking about. And then Juwan went uh, best dress. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Juwan was a snazzy dresser. Uh, Still am a snazzy dresser. No, no, uh oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. You know what I'm saying? He got, what he got what? Two brothers and sisters still still managed to be the best dressed in the high school. Well, you know, you're you, rich. You know, most most gay men are good dressers. Oh, come <laughs> on. Just do it right. Uh, really? Uh, really? Uh, really? Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Wrap hater. It up. He's a hater. He's a hater. Nah, just because nah. he was wearing those elastic pants back in the day. Uh -oh. <laughs> we call them elastic man. I don't know, bro. You remember that? No, yeah, remember that. <laughs> hey, they look like jeans, but they had the strings and stuff under the waist. <laughs> hey, you know what I had my son, you know, we used to get them kind of pants like that because, you know, for little kids or whatever. <laughs> But I, I ain't know that. I ain't know they was for grown ups too. <laughs> Whatever, man. Whatever. Oh. Whatever, man. This, man. this is another great episode of the Rip Twenty Eight Podcast, man. We got any part shots, man? We gonna start off with the president, man. You got anything to say before we get out of here, man? Uh, Y'all be safe, man. Uh, that COVID is rearing back up, affecting. Football, basketball, life, school, all that stuff, man. So y'all just try to stay stay healthy. What What about you, LBZ? You got anything to say before we get out of here? Man, only thing God says, enjoy your family. Enjoy your time. Time is the only thing that you can't get back, man. So enjoy it while you're here. Be safe. Love on your loved ones. And let's have a prosperous and, and a great 2022. All right. What about you, J.K.? Yeah, same thing, man. Take time and, you know, take a walk. You know, enjoy enjoy what God has put out there in the world. You know, enjoy the trees. Enjoy breathing in the air. You know, just enjoy yourself because uh, uh, 2022 is coming and uh, and just enjoy your family and your time off. And uh, the grind is coming back. So. All right, man. This is the Rip 28 Podcast, man. This is a podcast where a few friends get together. And we talk about a few things. Now, some of those things you might like, some of those things you might not like. But we're going to keep on talking about them on the RIP 28 podcast. And before we get out of here, man, I want to let everybody know, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, 2022 is going to be the year for you. You're going to be able to do all things that you set out to accomplish. You will accomplish them. You will do them. And you will get better. You will be able to beat every obstacle in your life. Except me. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.
Yes, I'm sure I've been getting a friend of mine. One hand, I can match you in the lead. Don't allow pretend to be. I got these eyes like Boston, so I like to see so much of me.